In this lecture, we're going to take a little deeper look at the um, cardinal hierarchy, the Alephs. In particular, we're going to look at how hard or easy they are to reach from below. So there's two kind of templates or guiding examples here. First, we observe that finite unions of finite sets are finite. So it is hard to reach in this sense the infinite uh, by taking kind of unions in the finite realm. Similarly, countable unions of countable sets are countable. So it's hard to reach the uncountable by working completely in the countable realm. Right. So in terms of cardinals, we could say that it's hard to reach the cardinals Aleph naught and Aleph one from below. And as it turns out, this is a general phenomenon for many cardinals, and the concept of cofinality makes this precise. We start with the definition of cofinality. So in the following, we assume that alpha is a limit ordinal, and then we say a subset of alpha is cofinal in alpha if for all gamma less than alpha there exists a xi in x such that gamma is less than xi. You can easily check that this is equivalent to alpha being just the union over all xi in x. The cofinality of alpha, uh, denoted by cof alpha, is then the least ordinal beta such that there exists an f that uh, maps beta into alpha cofinally. And it's also not hard to see that we can assume that f is strictly increasing. Um, so we can thin out f to make it strictly increasing if necessary. So you should uh, uh, verify this too. Here are a few examples of cofinality. So the cofinality of omega is omega. Right? So um, it's uh, the standard omega sequence here that witnesses this, but it can also be not less than omega because then we would have a finite sequence and the finite sequence cannot be cofinal in omega. The cofinality of omega plus omega is omega too, um, because here a cofinal sequence would be omega plus one, omega plus two, and so on. And again, it's not hard to see that you cannot have a shorter sequence than uh, length omega. Finally, Similarly, the cofinality of omega times omega is uh, omega also. And here the cofinal sequence would be omega 1, omega times 2, omega times 3, and so on. And here are some basic properties of cofinality. So first of all, it's clear that the cofinality of alpha is always at most alpha, because any alpha is cofinal in itself. Moreover, the cofinality is always a cardinal. If it weren't, uh, we could find a cardinal of the same cardinality to the cofinality of alpha, and then use the fact that this can be mapped bijectively to the cofinality to find a mapping from that cardinal cofinal into alpha. Finally, the cofinality of the cofinality of alpha is equal to the cofinality of alpha, and uh, one direction. So this this is always less than or equal to this that follows directly from this fact. The other direction, so that this the cofinality of the cofinality is always at least uh, as large as the cofinality of alpha. Well, if it were smaller. We could take a, a witness mapping. Uh, we could take a mapping witnessing the cofinality of the cofinality of alpha, and compose it with a mapping uh, witnessing the cofinality of alpha, and compose those and get a smaller value for the cofinality of alpha itself. But you should uh, verify this uh, yourself. It's not hard. So let's look at a few examples. The cofinality of zero is zero. The cofinality of alpha plus one is just one, because we can just uh, take alpha here itself. We can take the function that maps uh, one to alpha. The cofinality of omega is omega, right? Because we can 
take the sequence uh, 0, 1, 2, and so on, right? and that um, is co clearly co-final in omega, but there's no shorter sequence uh, that is shorter than omega that uh, would do that for us. The cofinality of omega plus omega is omega because now we could, uh, for instance, look at the sequence omega plus one, omega plus two, and so on. Okay. Some basic properties: the cofinality of alpha is always at most alpha. So furthermore, we have that the cofinality of alpha is always a cardinal. And that's simply due to the fact that um, the um, cardinal of an ordinal, right, is bijective can be mapped bijectively to the ordinal, right. So if it were in the cardinal, we would get a contradiction because we could get uh, a mapping from a lesser ordinal, uh, a cofinal mapping. And finally. The cofinality of the cofinality of alpha is just the cofinality of alpha. Um, one uh, direction follows from this uh, right away, and if uh, we could actually get a, uh, a truly smaller value here, well, then we could put the mappings together, the mappings that witness the cofinality of the cofinality of alpha, and the mapping that witnesses the cofinality of alpha, and get a uh, a truly smaller cofinality of alpha itself as a contradiction. So you should uh, briefly go over that argument yourself. We can now make precise what it means that uh, a cardinal is hard to reach from below. Um, and uh, the term we're going to use is that an infinite cardinal is kappa is regular if its cofinality is equal to itself. Right? So we cannot reach that cardinal from below by a sequence shorter than itself. And if it's, uh, if we are able to do that, on the other hand, then we call that cardinal singular. So and now, linking back to the big examples from the beginning, we see that in this, in the sense of this definition, Aleph not is regular, as is Aleph one. Right. But for example, Aleph Omega is singular, since the cofinality is um, of Aleph Omega is just the cofinality of Omega, which is Omega, because we have, for instance, that sequence here, Aleph not Aleph one, Aleph two, that is cofinal in Aleph uh, Omega. And the general theorem here is that any in fact, any infinite successor cardinal is regular. So we've seen Aleph 1 is regular, um, but this holds also for Aleph 2 and so on. So think a little bit about how you would try to prove this. So the proof is, in fact, not hard. You uh, can proceed by contradiction. Uh, assuming that uh, the cofinality of uh, alpha aleph alpha plus one is delta, which is strictly less than aleph sub alpha plus one, well, then we know that there exists a cofinal mapping from delta into aleph uh, sub alpha plus one. So, in particular, aleph sub alpha plus one is the union of these uh, images, right? Of uh, uh, F uh, for all gamma less than delta. Well, we know that the car if the cardinality, so we know that the cardinality of delta is less than aleph sub alpha plus one. And we also know because F maps into aleph uh, sub alpha plus one, we know that the cardinality of each F of gamma here for gamma less than delta is less than aleph sub alpha plus one. But this implies, right, because this is the um, successor alpha here, the successor cardinal, that means that the cardinality of delta is at most aleph sub alpha, and the cardinality of each of those images here is also at most aleph sub alpha. But this means that the cardinality of aleph sub alpha plus one, which is the union of all 
the uh, afgamas here, right, is equal to the union of these f of gammas. But this is a union of at most Aleph sub alpha many sets, right, because of the cardinality of del delta, right? And each of these sets has cardinality at most Aleph sub alpha. So by a theorem we saw before, right, about unions, the uh, cardinality of this would be at most Aleph sub alpha, which would be a contradiction. So in the case of limit cardinals, right, there we have already observed, for example, that the cofinality of Aleph sub omega is omega. Here, generally, we have that the cofinality of Aleph sub uh, lambda is just the cofinality of lambda. Um, and the reason is rather simple, right? Because on the one hand, if we have a cofinal mapping from gamma to lambda into lambda, then this mapping, right, where we just map beta to Aleph sub f of beta uh, would be cofinal in uh, Aleph sub lambda. So that shows that this is always at most this. And in the other direction, if we have a cofinal mapping from gamma into uh, Aleph sub lambda, we can turn this into a cofinal map from gamma to lambda by just saying we map it beta to alpha precisely when the um, cardinality of f of beta is uh, Aleph sub alpha. Cofinality also lets us tell something about uh, the cardins, cardinals of the form 2 to the kappa, or more general, of the form lambda to the kappa. Namely, if kappa is an infinite cardinal, then uh, its cofinality, the cofinality of 2 to the kappa has to be greater than kappa. So again, I encourage you to think about uh, this, uh, how to prove this uh, for a few minutes yourself. And here's a first hint on how to prove this. So suppose we had a mapping f from some ordinal delta into uh, 2 to the kappa that is cofinal in 2 to the kappa, but delta is at most kappa, right? We want to show that this actually would have to be greater than kappa. What you use here um, is called Koenig's theorem. So if you use that to derive a contradiction, what does Koenig's theorem say? If you have two families of ordinals over the same index family here, index set, and each uh, kappa i is strictly less than lambda i, then the sum of the kappa i, so the, that is the cardinality of the disjoint union of the kappa i, right, is less than the product of the lambda i, so that which is the um, cardinality of the product of the lambda i's. Right? And so that's Koenig's theorem. And you uh, can prove this um, by uh, supposing you have a uh, mapping from the sum of the kappa i into the product of the lambda i, and then you use the axiom of choice to show that this mapping cannot be onto. So how can we use Koenig's theorem now to derive uh, this a contradiction here? Well, uh, remember we have we assume we have this mapping, right, which uh, witnesses a code of finality at most kappa. Well, that means that for, in particular, that for all gamma less than delta, the cardinality of this is less than 2 to the kappa, right? And therefore, we have 2 to the kappa, right? Is, it's the cardinality of this union because, right, um, 2 to the kappa is this union here, right? Which is less than or equal to the, um, to the uh, disjoint union of these f gammas here, so this delta sum. But by Koenig's theorem, this sum, this delta sum here is less than this delta product over simply the two to, uh, two to the kappas, right? Because we know each of these f of gammas uh, 
cardinality has cardinality at most two to the kappa, right? So that's where Koenig's theorem comes in. Well, this is two to the kappa to the delta, and by some uh, simple cardinal arithmetic and um, the uh, uh, triviality of cardinal multiplication, we've seen before this we get that this is equal to just 2 to the kappa, so we would have 2 to the kappa is strictly less than 2 to the kappa, uh, which gives us the contradiction. As a corollary of that previous result, we immediately obtain that uh, the cardinality of the continuum, 2 to the aleph naught, cannot be aleph omega. So while that doesn't settle the continuum hypothesis, of course, it does tell us something about the cardinality of the continuum, namely it can't be aleph omega. And the reason is simply that we've just seen that the cofinality of 2 to the aleph naught is, um, has to be greater than aleph naught, while the cofinality of aleph omega, of course, as we observed before, is omega, that is aleph naught. An interesting question is now whether there are regular limit cardinals. Um, these cardinals are called inaccessible, and um, they seem kind of weird objects, right? Because what would have to hold for them? It would have to hold that Aleph Alpha is equal to the cofinality of Aleph Alpha, right? Um, which we know is equal to the cofinality of Alpha. which in turn is at most alpha. So for one thing, Aleph alpha would have to be uh, a, a fixed point so, uh, of the Aleph sequence. So Aleph alpha would have to be equal to alpha. Well, it's not that hard to produce such fixed points, um, but the problem is to actually get the cofinality to be aleph alpha. Um, usually for these uh, fixed points that we can produce, we get cofinality omega or so. Uh, so to get them actually to have cofinality aleph alpha is rather hard. And in fact, it turns out that the existence of inaccessible cardinals is not provable in ZF if ZF is cons consistent. And this will turn out to be a consequence of the second Gödel incompleteness theorem.